Let us pray. Gracious God, here we are again on this Monday, Thursday, here by your mandate and the love that will not let us go. Open our hearts and minds, O oh Lord, to your work here that draws us in, that opens our hearts, that invites us to lay bare all of who we are in your presence and to know as your people we are welcomed. So refresh us, cleanse us, convict us, and draw us in. Speak to us, Lord. Your servants are listening. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen. Please be seated. This afternoon, I was sending an email to a friend of mine. He is a young Reformed minister, and for him, the whole occasion of Maundy Thursday is foreign to at least his branch of that tradition. So I sent him this little email describing a little bit about what we would be doing when we gather here. So I talked a little bit about you know, communion and foot washing. And here's what I said. I said, this is a solemn, holy, and sometimes invasive time. Solemn because we proclaim the Lord's death. Holy because it is set apart in time to ponder and give thanks for the extraordinary mysteries of Christ's sacrificial atonement, and invasive because I am never invited to ponder these things at a distance. I am drawn in. In fact, if there was ever, ever a time when this Episcopalian would ever believe in Calvin's irresistible grace, it would be tonight. And it's because I have almost no power to say no to God's invitation, even though it can almost feel frightening. I, I want to be drawn in all the more. Yes, God, get between my toes when my feet are washed. Touch with your tenderness those very sensitive places in me, bringing peace and order. Create resting places between the unanswered questions. And above all, show me yourself. The good news, which like a strong rope pulls me into this service, is that I know in advance that I will be welcomed by God to his table. Quote, as the hymn says, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. But knowing that doesn't necessarily work in me enough draw to actually open all of my heart in a way that even I just described. You see, the temptation is in this service is to enter into it, but enter into it only partially. And of course, if that's the best we can do, that's better, than, of course, than nothing at all. But the intimacy of what is happening here in the washing of the feet and even in the receiving of the bread and wine where we ingest into the deepest part of our system that which we say literally communicates to us the very mystery of the presence of Christ into the deepest part of who we are. Well, that's invasive, isn't it? Certainly more intimate than almost anything we even begin to know about human relationships. So it's a leap to go from that place where I feel like a part of my heart is protected and to come into a place where my, I'm being invited to lay down my arms, to lay down my guard. Christina Rossetti, the famous Christian poet, puts it this way. Am I a stone and not a sheep that I can stand, O Christ, beneath thy cross to number drop by drop thy blood's slow loss and yet not weep? Not so the women, loved who with exceeding grief lamented thee. Not so fallen Peter, who wept bitterly. Not so the thief on the cross. 
Not so the sun and the moon, which hid their faces in a starless sky, a horror of great darkness at broad noon. No, I, only I, yet give not o'er, but seek thy sheep, true shepherd of the flock, greater than Moses. Turn and look once more and smite this rock. That place inside of me that still keeps God at a distance. And I, I don't know about you, but how I know that place exists in my life is because the absence of stillness. You see, if there is within me the capacity to be still, that means there is within me the capacity to contemplate. And if there is within me the capacity to contemplate, that means there is within me the capacity, by God's mercy, to receive a guest into that place of silent contemplation. The guest, of course, being a permanent resident, God. And because there is a part of me that actually really likes having that onslaught of information, that sense of it's all right here and there's multitasking and there are things to do, the very nature and character of my life, and I'm sure many of ours, is actually cultivated against developing that kind of inner stillness, that kind of contemplation. And so as a result, this becomes in fact a defense, a defense from the deepest things that God might desire to reveal to us, to impart into us, to allow us to begin to actually experience, not just know, but experience a kind of inner still tranquility that makes room for the companionship of his presence. The experience of, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Henri Nouwen writes it this way in a little book of devotionals called Bread for the Journey. He said, we may think about stillness in contrast to our noisy world, but perhaps we can go further and think about an inner stillness, even while we carry on business, work, music, construction, the organization of meetings. It is important to keep stillness in the marketplace and not just in the monastery. This still place is where God speaks. It is the place from which also where we can speak in a healing way to the people that we meet in, these, in this very busy world. Without that still space, we start spinning. We become driven people, running all over the place without much real direction. But with stillness, God can be our gentle guide even in the midst of the high demand of life. And how I know that I don't have all of that stillness is when I'm invited here, right here. And so the Rossetti poem, strike this rock. Because what I'm actually being invited into is a deep place of security. To come to the table and to receive the sacrament of his body and blood, as the colic says so rightfully, is a pledge of our inheritance. In other words, it is meant to communicate and impart into us and allow us to experience a tremendous place of inner security, a place where we know that we belong and that God is committed to never letting us go. And out of that, even a place where our conscience is eased. Because all of us have things where we do this, even if it's, the sac it's in the spending and misspending of the things that God has given us. It is here that we are reaffirmed again, not just as welcomed, but actually cleansed, forgiven people. It is here that in that place of knowing that we are His, that we gain new boldness in prayer because we know we have access to God and that that access is not somehow qualified or quantified based on what I do, but grace opens the door for me to come in. I can come as I am to that table and know that it is in that place that God meets me even though metaphorically or perhaps even literally my hands are dirty. And it is in that deep place of security 
that I, remind, I am reminded that I am literally kept, kept, protected, kept in the power of God. As Paul writes, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. You see, if all I know is this, I don't have actually any experience of much of any of that, much less an, a day-to-day -day belief in it. And so I need more than ever to be able to come and in essence allow God through the hands of a brother or sister tonight to wash between my toes and to show me by that action that even as Jesus washed the feet of his disciples knowing that they would betray him, so also sisters and brothers in Christ will wash each other's feet knowing that we belong to Jesus, knowing that there will be times when we betray him, knowing that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, knowing we need his work in us to strike the rock of our hearts, to give us whatever is necessary to pull down the defenses at least long enough that we might again be refreshed, reminded of whose we are, and that we are more than the sum total of our mistakes, and that his love never lets us go. Will you enter into that? Will you pray for God to pull down those places of protection that you have created and that I've created, that we might commune with him, not just receive from him, but to commune with him and know the pledge, the pledge that God makes to us and reminds us of again and again of eternal life, that we are his and that he will never let us go. Amen.